What's going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and today I'm gonna be explaining Megumi's domain expansion and theorizing how his domain exactly works. Essentially, with the release of Chapter 170, we see Megumi activating Chimera Shadow Garden, and there's just a lot of question marks surrounding his domain, like how unique and different it is compared to others, how his domain might finally be complete or still incomplete, and the mysterious image in the background. I've I read a lot of comments yesterday about your guys' thoughts on the latest chapter, and I decided to combine those thoughts as well as mixing in a theory of my own of how I think Megumi's domain works and the status it currently is in. So as always guys, before I start, I would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like on the video as that would help me out a ton, and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright, so I'm gonna discuss the first two topics together. Topic number one, is Megumi's domain still incomplete? And topic number two, how different it is compared to other domains we've seen in the past. Technically, this is still a theory video since we won't know for sure until the next chapter comes out, which is in like 10 days, so yeah, for now we're just gonna base this off from the previous chapters. To start off, Megumi has never activated a complete domain expansion in the past. The first time he used it was incomplete as it was during the Origin of Obedience arc, and from this moment on, after the Shibuya incident arc, we've seen that Megumi has grown his curse technique to a higher extent, spawning the Maharaj and using more of his shadows to fight. A complete domain expansion shouldn't be too far away from him, right? Well, in this chapter, he activates his domain, and it makes me wonder if it's complete or still incomplete. Now, in my chapter review, I believed that Megumi might have activated a complete domain expansion. However, in the comments, it was more like 30 to 70, where more people believed that he hadn't activated a complete domain expansion, and I guess like this is my thinking process for how it works, because we know for sure Megumi has progressed Chimera Shadow Garden as the whole area is filled with darkness. Unlike the last time he used it, we can see that the walls and the ceilings weren't necessarily black, thus being an incomplete domain, but in this chapter, we can see that he's now able to fill the whole area with his dark fluid shadows, like everything is completely black, the walls, the roof, the floor, and there seems to be something forming in the background. These are the noticeable differences that weren't in the first domain. The only thing that's kept the same from the last time was him not being able to lay a barrier. Even now, Megumi still can't create a barrier to separate his domain. Most domains we've seen in the past have a barrier wall that creates a separate space. It's such a difficult thing to do for Megumi because he can't conceptualize the concept of how to create a separate space that's bigger on the inside than it is is outside. So that's why he went to the gymnasium in the first place during his battle with Reggie. Because the gym room already has an existing space for Megami to use his domain. It's so much easier for him to lay it all out once there's already a predetermined area instead of creating one that seems illogical. So overall, I do think his domain is already complete because he's now able to fill the entire space with his shadows unlike the last time. And there seems to be some super big figure growing behind him. This is what makes me believe that Chimero Shadow Garden is complete because of the looks on the inside. However, not creating a barrier is what makes the majority of the community believe that Megumi still hasn't activated a complete domain expansion. But I honestly don't think that not being able to create a barrier doesn't necessarily mean your domain is incomplete, because if Megumi can find another way to lay out his domain with an existing space, then everything else should be fine. I think his domain now looks a lot like a complete Chimera Shadow Garden on the inside, despite not creating a separate space. As long as he can just lay out his domain and it looks complete, then Honestly, that looks like a complete domain expansion to me, or at least a complete domain expansion on a smaller scale. I don't think he necessarily needs to create a separate barrier, and 
I don't think he ever will, to be honest. I think the uniqueness of his domain expansion will just be laid out onto the world. Definitely let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. And now the last topic I want to talk about is the image in the background. A lot of people like myself believe that this is some sort of spine. A vertebrae, maybe, of a chimera, or the construction of a maharaga, some new shikigami. It's very clear that it's some type of shikigami organism with the image looking a lot like a spine. And I think this panel is showing the spine growing midway into its full form, so we won't know what it is yet, but I do want to share a theory of one of my subscribers and Discord mod, Cats Are Fluffy. Shout out to Cats, because Cats made a great theory of what this thing could be. And I'd like to share this theory with you guys, so all credit goes to Kat for thinking of this. Alright, so we know that Megumi's domain is called the Chimera Shadow Garden. In the last chapter, we see his domain is more complete as well as something behind him. The thing that is behind him looks like it's forming a spine and creating a big skeleton. I think it's forming a Gashidokuro, giant skeletons that wander around the countryside at night. They are soldiers and victims of famine who died unknown in the wilderness. One of the first deceptions of the Gashidokuro was in the 10th century in Japan, better known as the Heian period. The one who used the Gashidokuro was Takayashi Hime. She was the daughter of Taira no Masakado, who is one of the three vengeful spirits in Jujutsu Kaisen. Alright, so before we continue, if you're a bit confused and lost, well, don't worry. The Jujutsu Kaisen story is not meant to be easy, so I'll try to add some context to Kat's theory. For those who don't know, it was said in the Heian era that three great vengeful cursed spirits were born. Now, I don't speak Japanese, so sorry for the mispronunciation, but the three great vengeful cursed spirits' names were Taira no Masakado, and Perusutoku, and the Sugarara no Michizine. Again, sorry for the miss and poor pronunciation. Now, the three great vengeful cursed spirits originate from the three big families. The Zanin family, the Gojo family, and the Kamo family. They all descended from the three great vengeful cursed spirits. We already learn in the manga that the Sugarara no Michizine is the ancestor of Gojo and Yuta Akotsu. Historically, the Sugarara no Michizine is related to the Gojo family. Now, apparently, Taira no Masakado is related to the Zanin family, and shout out to Kal Anime scouter for this information. If you would like to know how this was figured out, then you can check the Twitter thread that will be linked in the description. Alright, so we know from Kat that Taira no Masakado is related to the Gashidokuro, and we know from Kyle that Taira is also related to the Zenin clan. Plus, Megumi's Ten Shadows technique is an inherited technique from the Zenin family, so they all have related connections to each other. Moving on, Megumi's Ten Shadows are based on the Shadow Play animals. Again, shout out to Kyle for this information, as I highly recommend you check out the Twitter thread which will be linked in the description so you guys can read the explanation. But uh, overall, we have not seen all of Megumi's Ten Shadows. We've seen seven out of his ten Shikigamis, six particularly since he hasn't tamed the Maharagi yet, at least I don't think he has, but yeah, seven in total, and because his technique is based on shadow play, Kyle believes that it's very possible for Megami to summon a human as a Shikigami, more particularly, as Kat theorizes, a Gashudokuro. I know I said this a bunch of times already, but I'm gonna leave a lot of links and videos that supports the theory, you know, videos about the Gashudokuro and its mythology in the description. I personally want this theory to be true because it would be awesome to see something like that in the Jujutsu Kaisen world. Also, there's a lot of supporting evidence that makes this a solid theory. So yeah, big thanks to Katz and Cal for allowing me to share this theory. Personally, if it's not the Gashidokuro, then I think the next possible guess would be just uh, some Chimera Garden, hence the name Chimera Shadow Garden, because it does seem like a spine of a Chimera, then like the branches growing out, creating some sort of garden. I don't know, this is why I love Jujutsu Kaisen, because it's so fun to theorize and just discuss moments like these. So definitely comment away any thoughts you have on this video, you know, or a apply to Kat's theory, a theory of your own. I'd love to hear your thoughts as I do read the comment section, but uh, yeah. That's all I have to say for today's theory video. Thank you so much for watching. It's been the Fake Weeb, and I'm out. Peace.